In this Connect with Remedy recorded webinar, I will talk about getting the most out of BMC's REST API. My name is Justin Baker. I'm a senior technical support analyst and I concentrate on web-based technologies, digital workplace and SaaS products. I'm also a frequent blogger. You might have come across some of my blog articles on BMC communities about mid-tier SaaS products and a lot of about web services, of course. We're going to have a look at the overview of web services. I want to explain to you how web services work, but more specifically, of course, how REST works, um, what the definitions are of REST, the theory, and more importantly, how it's used in practice. Obviously, we're going to have a look at uh, Remly's implementation of REST, and but I don't want to stop there. I want to give you a real-world example, give you an idea how it's really used in practice. Afterwards, I have a couple of references for you, which hopefully set you on your way. Now, in a disco world, interconnectivity is becoming really important. Like application systems need to be able to communicate together, either because they need to transfer data or they need to give some kind of different use experience. Now, Remedy offers functionality through web services. So in the past, um, we would you may mainly use something like the Java API or a SOAP web service. But the problem with SOAP is it, it's, it's difficult to use, as that's a very strict interpretation of the protocol. That means constructing requests can be really complicated. So you spend an awful lot of time developing integrations, and it, it's just very prone to problems. Enter the REST API. REST addresses many of these concerns, and it takes away the complexities of SOAP. So it makes it easier to communicate between two systems. The result is a shorter development time and more flexibility to tap into the Remly applications. Web services, they provide a clean and reasonably easy way to get data from one system to a completely different system. But how does it actually work? If you want to share your data, you need to provide access. But obviously, you're not going to expose your whole database directly to uh, a third party. You're not going to expose your application logic. Security issues would be a main problem, major problem. And if you, if, you did get a, if you did get around this, you have to explain in detail how you would interact with the application. So what do you do? You define some kind of interface. And you need to make sure your interface is standardized. So this means that both the provider and the consumer know exactly how to use it. They know what the requests look like. They know how the response is formatted. So the two systems can communicate. One way of doing this is using the REST API. Now REST stands for Representational State Transfer. And a lot has been written about REST. It describes the architecture of the web itself. It forms the foundation of the design of web applications. But aside from these very lofty descriptions, what does REST actually mean? Now, what is a REST API really about? And it depends who you ask, really. A purist would tell you that the REST is an architectural style based on a set of principles describing how network resources are defined and addressed. They will stress that REST is not dependent on the underlying protocol. They will argue it's stateless and that, unlike SOAP, it's a style, it's not a protocol. That's all true, but it doesn't really tell us what a REST API really is. Now, the fact is that all these abstract descriptions of REST don't really help us much in the real world. Because <laughs> I think the real definition of REST is what it actually does, how it's actually used. Now, in theory, REST could use any protocol. In reality, it just uses HTTP. It uses standard web services, and a web service acts as a REST service. The main principle of REST, and that's the one to remember, is that rather than using complex mechanisms like RPC or SOAP to communicate between different machines, we use simple, easy to understand HTTP requests. So when we say REST API, what we really mean is a HTTP-based API. If we retrieve data, we would use uh, GET. If we're making an update, we would use POST. And you combine it with URLs, which you use like verbs. So it leads to requests and responses that are a lot easier to understand. 
So we are getting information about a city called Dublin. Now compare this to the SOAP request, and I hope you agree it's a lot easier to use. A client which uses SOAP or RPC works like a custom desktop application. It's tightly coupled to a server. It's a very rich contract between the client and the server. REST, it isn't like that. It's intuitive. It makes more sense. I think it's a lot better than it came before. But I think you still need to be familiar at least with the API to really use it. Because to be honest, we take a bit of liberty with implementation of REST. Since REST isn't a protocol but more an architectural style, it doesn't really matter. Because we use the principles of REST. And I like to think of it as a REST-based web server, not necessarily a RESTful API. But then again, that's the purest thing we're talking. What does BMC's implementation of REST look like? First off, we only publish. It's not possible to consume a REST API. Our web server choice is Jetty. We don't use Mid-Tier and we don't use Tomcat. Yeti is fully integrated in AES server, um, but it's still a dedicated web server which can be turned on and off separate to, um, from AES server. Now, once it's turned on, all the forms are always available through the API. It's not like SOAP, you don't define a web service, you interact directly with a form. But you still have all the functionality offered by a server behind its form. So you have the permission model, the workflow, it kicks off all the sort of filters. And I think a good example will be uh, the interface forms with our offer through ITSM. Via REST, you interact directly with the incident interface form to create and modify incidents. And the workflow required to do all the stuff in the background that just kicks off when you create your incidents. Let's have a look at a typical request. Just to give it a bit idea what the REST call, just get a better idea what the REST call really looks like. Notes request and, and, and have a look at the URL here. So you can see the the method there, it's get. So we, we're getting something. We're getting a, uh, the user with ID 001. Right, so you can, it's quite easy to read. Um, the, obviously, you need a couple of headers since you know we're dealing with HTTP, but I hope you agree it's a lot easier to read here. Now, check the response. We're getting 200 OK, so it's indication that's successful. Then we see all the data here in JSON format, which we then can process. Now, let's have a look at another example here. Now we're using put. So put is update. So we're not getting something, we're using put. We're going to do the update. And again, we're using 001. So we're updating the record with 001. And now we're getting a different error. It's 404 not found. So you can kind of work out what it's trying to do here. It's basically updating something that it, it, it can't find, well, it, it can't find the records. So see how it makes more sense. HTTP methods are used as they are intended. We're not using post for everything like you would in um, SOAP. And we're not just throwing HTTP 200 and then a complex error message. We're using the methods HTTP and HTTP as it is our intended. But I want to go beyond the usual HTTP examples and, and I really want to give you a look but how REST is used in the real world. Now, REST, it lends itself really well with integration with development platforms like Java, Angular, PHP. So if you're developing an application that needs to interact with AS server, REST is an excellent choice. So let's have a look at an example. So this is a paid time off application that I develop on the Remedy platform. It allows me to submit my holiday request, check the status, cancel them, and my request are sent to my manager or approval, and once they're approved, the system will let me know. So let us have a quick look how it um, all fits together. So you can see the typical Remedy interface here. In, I'm going to create a new request now. I'm going to fill in the dates, the start date. And the end date. And 
I'm gonna submit it and then in the background um, some filter processing will take over my models will approve it and hopefully when I click refresh um, there it is approved all in the system so that's your typical Remini application um, it, it does what I need to do and there's a lot of stuff going on in the background but I think the UI is it's a bit dated it's a bit 1990s and it can do with an update um, I want my end users to use phones as well to use mobile devices and this app is not going to render well on the phone but I don't really want to develop the whole thing from scratch because maybe it's not the UI that I want but it's certainly the the business process in the background is what I wanted to do I really want that approval stuff to happen I, I want to make able to store all the dates and deal with all my permissions so this is what I came up with um, it, it, basically creating a different UI so I use this calendar view here to quickly show my um, the time off um, using these different color codes and uh, different stats that sort of stuff but it still taps into the old application it, it's more of an interface it doesn't do anything else so let's just have a look how this works and I kind of just here's my RAM application again and here is my um, mobile application so I authenticate and there it is so you can see the dates green is approved the other stuff is still pending and here's me creating a new request select the dates click plus and there it goes if I go back to my Remini application again and I click refresh with the table you can see there it is there's my new request now wait if my managers approve it, approve it or um, I create a new one here so I select the dates again start date and end date Submit it and um, go back here, refresh it here, and there it is. And if I cancel it here, it disappears here. So you can see it's the same system, it's just a different way of showing this data. And the way I do this is using the REST API. I want to give an idea of how all this works. So I want to show you how I implemented this and um, how the API fits in. Now on the left we have the Remini application. It runs on AI server. So you see my application there and I define an interface form just like we do in ITSM. And then you got the API which is that orange thing there. The API interacts with the forms and then my application to so the Android application on the right interacts using the REST API through that form. That's the way it works here. So the mobile app on the right is divided in three classes. I, um, I, I like to divide stuff so it makes it a bit more, more doable. First you got your ARS logic. That's the stuff that, that, that just deals with creating the REST call, the HTTP request. Got, uh, and then that interacts with another class for PTO server. It has these, these sort of requests with um, create bank holiday requests or uh, retrieve PTO requests, those sort of things. And then if you have all that, I use the rest, just the application logic for all the Android specific stuff. So in the end, it doesn't really matter if I use it for um, Android or if I use the, the, the two libraries for something completely different. This is what's happening in the background when my Android application starts communicating with the REST API. So you can clearly see this HTTP request being generated and log in call, copy request for information and we'll log out again. And if we look at one of the requests, you can clearly see the GET request with all the details, a couple of HTTP headers and the answer. And we get a HTTP 200 with a couple of bits and pieces and of course then the JSON data with all the information. So look at the JSON, you can clearly see the details there, the PTO dates, the end date, the start dates, the short description, that sort of stuff. 
then you write the code to pass all of this and use it in your application. But I hope you appreciate how simple these requests look. And it's a lot, a lot easier to use than, say, the Java API or SOAP web services. Don't worry, I'm not going to take you through this line by line. I just want to give you an idea, a flavor of what you can um, do with this sort of stuff. If you just think of it as building HTTP requests and then kind of just build your class around it just to, to do whatever it needs to do, it doesn't really matter what you use it for. But you can still plug into Remedy. Now, I hope this gives you a sense of what you can do with the REST API. Now, the API lends itself really well for development on code level, it's intuitive, and its approach helps you to quickly develop applications to interact with your Remedy based applications. And if you want to know more, you can check out our documentation, or you can uh, read my blog post on BMC Communities. And that's thereby I rest my case. Right, thanks very much for listening, and I hope it was useful.